Oh, the horror! That's right, the horror. Today, we are gonna talk about my top 10 horror books of the year. While most of them did come out this year, there are a few that did not come out this year. And they are my top 10 of the year because I read them this year. Horror is a gift that keeps on giving. I'm gonna go from, I don't wanna say least to best, cause there's no least. There are definitely a top three and the rest of them I would all put in fourth place. I don't like that I had to put someone at the bottom. All of them are fantastic, and just a few of them really just blew me out of the water, and those are the top three. We'll start with Sundial by Catriona Ward. Catriona Ward is an author I just started reading this year. I don't know, it took me so long. She also wrote The Last House on Needless Street, also Little Eve. Sundial was such a creepy and weird story, and it has the classic Catriona Ward twists as she is definitely becoming known for in the way that she writes. And it's a story about this family and returning to the desert because this woman, her child is uh, exhibiting some strange things that she's into and she's found animal bones that her kid's been collecting through some weird unsavory methods, maybe. It's just a great story. And the twist in it, I definitely didn't see it coming. The next one is The Fervor by El Makatsu. And this story takes place during the times when there were internment camps, which they had during the war. Basically, the US kind of rounded up all the Asian people and threw them in these camps during the war and made them live in them. It was really horrible, and I didn't even know about it until I read this book. But this story is about one of the camps and it focuses on the mother and this daughter and how this weird disease comes to the camp and it starts spreading. So this disease or cold or whatever it is, it starts leading to these like fits of aggression and violence within the camp. They think that outside of it just being, you know, some sort of sickness that it's possibly a, a demon or a spider demon of some sort. Why is it always gotta be spiders? And it's just so good. The way Elma Katsu writes is fantastic. And she has written a really, really amazing story. If you haven't read The Fervor yet, I highly recommend it. Actually, all of these, obviously, I highly recommend them because they're my top 10. Put them on your list. I know we have an ever-growing list of TBR that I need more hours in my day to read more books <laughs> outside of, you know, adulting and having to do other stuff. So the next one is Daphne by Josh Mellerman. As you all know, I am a big Josh Mellerman fan. Daphne came out this year and it is the story of this woman who used to uh, come around the town. She was really tall. She loved the band Kiss. There's a lot of rumors of how she died, and rumors of maybe it was suicide or that the townspeople killed her or whatever had happened. One day, people in town hadn't thought about her for a long time and they start thinking about Daphne again and you're not supposed to think about Daphne because if you think about Daphne, she will come. The story centers around the main character, Kit Lamb, who is a high school basketball player. And one of the nights before their big game, they have a sleepover and one of the girls on the team tells a story about Daphne. And then it gets everybody thinking about Daphne. One by one, people start being murdered. And it's a crazy slasher and it was so good. If you like slashers, Daphne's awesome if you haven't had a chance to check it out. I actually went to um, Josh Mellerman is from Michigan and he had a reading for the debut of this book that was in, in a town that was somewhat close to where I live, close enough where we could drive. So me and my friend went and we got to see that and it was pretty awesome. On my Instagram, I have a couple of clips from it. It was theatrical, there was music, they had people dressed up in character and it was really fantastic. If you wanna check out the Instagram, it shouldn't be too far of a scroll down. I have a link to my Instagram down below. And then the next one was Effects Vary by Michael Harris Cohen. So it's a collection of short stories that are darkly disturbing in the best of ways. Just also the way he writes, the descriptiveness, it's artistic in the way that it's so vivid when you read what he writes and you can kind of see it. There's just so many stories in it that were absolutely fantastic. A collection of brilliant darkness because only through the darkness can we truly learn to appreciate the light. And then next, another one of my favorites is Below by Laurel Hightower and it features my absolute 
favorite cryptid, Mothman. And it takes place in West Virginia, which if you've heard anything about Mothman, the Mothman Prophecies, the book that was written by John Keel, there's also a movie and all the stuff that happened in West Virginia. So this story is based in there and it follows the main character who's on her way to a horror convention. And then stuff gets weird. There's a blizzard that happens and the lady's trying to go to the convention. She's driving in this crappy weather and she's following this semi truck. And then all of a sudden they see this strange creature with red eyes and leathery wings. And then it's just a crazy story. It's a novella, it's short and sweet, and I absolutely loved it. Next up, we have Lure by Tim McGregor. I loved Lure so much. So I'm a huge fan of any kind of story that has underwater elements. Currently reading the book, Our Wives Under the Sea, and I love like weird stuff about underwater. So this book is called Lure and it's a splasher. You heard me right, I said splasher because it's about a lure maid or a mermaid who comes into this small fishing village on the wake of this big storm that happens. You know, the, the townsfolk all see this creature. Uh, the men are all like, uh, let's kill it. You know, cause do I need to explain? And the women are fascinated and they're like, oh my goodness, you know, they're kind of captivated by this creature. And so the men go after it. And after that, bad crap ensues. Why would you do this? Some people are dumb. Boor is absolutely fantastic. It's another novella. It had a absolutely addictive story that I couldn't put down and I loved it. And as I said, I love stories that have some sort of like weird underwater element to it. Yeah, I came across this book through, I don't know, someone mentioned it on social media and I randomly bought it and I loved it. All right, next up we have Mary by Nat Cassidy. Mary is an insane story. There was this town out in Arizona and a long time ago, there was this serial killer that was uh, the son of some really rich people who owned this big manor and he was killing all these women and just disfiguring them and doing horrible things and murdering them. And so eventually they catch him and he dies. And at the moment of his death, this girl Mary is born. And it seems that maybe with all the weird stuff and all the things going through Mary's mind that she may or may not be possessed by the spirit of the serial killer. And it's a crazy story and I freaking loved it. All right, so now we're getting into my top three. Number three is The Fisherman by John Langan. This story is very Lovecraftian. I'd had it recommended to me by a few people and I was like, all right, I, I need to read this. I need to read this. And then finally I just, I put it on hold at the library and I got it and it's not super long and it's a slow burn and it's a story within a story. It was absolutely awesome. And I feel like it could, it has a vibe that it could be a classic one day. And I really feel like if you aren't into like super intense horror. This is like a slow burn and there's some creepy weird stuff that happens, but it's the story of this creek called Dutchman's Creek. And the creek is fed from the Ashokan Reservoir. And the reservoir, there used to be a town underneath the reservoir. And there was some weird stuff that happened way back in the day. And what creatures also lie beneath and what is down there? What feeds into the creek? There's weird stuff that's happened in the area of Dutchman's Creek people go missing or died there and just it was such a an enrapturing story that I am going to buy so that I can have it for my collection this is one I definitely want to reread again number two on the list and I have a feeling that if you guys have been following the channel for any amount of time you'll know what my number one is gonna be Shh, don't tell the people that don't know so number two is Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman. That book was wild. Wanna get haunted? What if you could take a drug and instead of getting high, you get haunted. That is the whole premise of this book and it's crazy and weird and it takes a look at addiction and just how that can spiral people into a bad place in a bad way and it was such a unique and weird book and I absolutely loved it. All right now drum roll. That's a terrible drum roll. The number one book is I know some of you know what it is. <laughs> School in the Cape by Josh Bellerman. This book blew my freaking socks off, right off my feet. I really hope this book comes to mass market because I want more people to read it. It's one of the best books I've ever read. The storytelling and the characters are so good. It's the road trip you didn't know 
you need it. Cool and the Cape take you to the places that are strange and weird and wondrous, and the conversations that happen and the events that happen along the way are just truly fantastic. And then the sentiment you have towards the characters, towards their car called Medley. There's just so much to love about this book. It was a special release, so the price of it, you that I don't know that you can find it for under $70. So I'm really, really hoping that it comes to mass market sooner or later. That book is really special. It's my absolute number one. If you like videos where I talk about lots of books that I've been reading, the next video coming up will be about multiple things that I have read in this spooky and horror vein. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back and see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.